Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the continuation of our Learn On webinar series. Uh, my name is Ben Smith. I'm the Supervisor of Educational Technology at the Lincoln Intermediate Unit. Uh, today's topic, as you can see on the screen, is face-to-face uh, -face online. It is student summarizing. So uh, as we begin, um, one of the things might be a little bit different for today. I, I'm flying solo here. Typically, we have uh, Nicole in the background, but she's in a, another meeting right now. So uh, I'm going to be answering all your questions. Uh, but we have a small group, and so I think we're going to be uh, just fine here together. Um, one of the things I'll point out is that I just populated the uh, slide deck into the chat, and I've turned on chat for everybody. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, this is the team that is putting together and powering uh, all of the Learn On content that you're seeing here. Uh, this is my contact information right there if you're interested. So you can, um, uh, if you're interested in um, contacting me, you can certainly come back for and, and, and do that. Uh, a couple of the norms that we go over at the beginning of all these meetings, um, Although it says chat has been disabled, we haven't actually done that for this webinar, so you're free to uh, populate information into the chat. Uh, what I would ask, though, is um, if you have questions, please put the questions in the Q&A pod that you see here. Uh, the reason we do that is that uh, it'll draw my attention um, a little bit more, and especially since I, I don't have that other support, I just want to make sure that you can um, that you can get your questions answered. And please feel free to start posting questions that you might have um, related to this webinar or to some of the other content that we've been um, talking about. And you're gonna see as I talk today that um, some of what I'm doing here actually relates back to uh, previous webinars. Uh, we can uh, actually give you the opportunity to speak if you want, you just raise your hand and uh, I can then uh, work to try and make sure that you have the opportunity to be able to share uh, that information. And don't forget to leave, uh, wait till the end for the Act 48 credit link so that you get credit for that. As we move into online learning and um, what is, is becoming our reality right now, um, we want to remind you that LEAs have the choice of, of either continuity of education or no instruction. And in this area, uh, everybody has cho chosen continuity of education. Um, some schools this week, for example, though, they use their flexible instruction days. They may have uh, still be preparing. And once you move to continuity of education, you're going to either do planned instruction or enrichment and review. Um, it can be different at different levels, different courses, different um, grade levels, uh, things like that. And you can do a mix and you'll see some, uh, what we see now is some schools are doing enrichment and review for this past week and maybe the week coming up <clears throat> as they prepare for planned instruction. So uh, as you think through, um, the webinar and you're looking okay what's going to be the focus so I'll, I'll talk about the focus first we're going to we're going to talk about um, moving from face to face online for student summarizing so we want you to know what tools to use the part the top part where it says you know you, i want you to know the tools that that is clear but this the bottom part is we're not going through all of the technical pieces and i recognize that if we were throwing a bunch of tools at you, and I'm gonna come back to that in a moment. We throw a bunch of tools at you, but really what we're talking about is how can you make some things happen? I wanna give you some ideas on how you might be able to um, work with your students to help them with the summarizing piece. This is a shorter webinar, and so we're not doing all the aspects on how that happens. Contact your coaches, look for some tutorials, and then reach out to us if you still need additional help um, in that regard. So what is summarizing? <laughs> so I actually pulled this slide from a previous slide deck that we did. And um, it's, to me, summarizing is where you get the students to explain. And, and the, this slide came from the explaining webinar that I did. So I linked in the YouTube archive of that particular webinar. So if, if you didn't attend that one and you're like, okay, he talked about some tools and then you didn't go over them. You're gonna to have to go back to that webinar and take a look at it. Um, and, and, and I'll mention the tools and you'll see that in a moment, but I just wanna make sure that you, you have the connection between what we're talking about here and then what we're going to talk about um, in previous or what we did talk about in previous ones. So for me, when I think about um, uh, summarizing, you know, to me, the, when we talked about explaining, 
teachers explain something to the students, that's usually the explaining piece. But then stu when students explain their understanding of the content, to me, that's the summarizing. Can students summarize what they've done? Can they share to you what they've done? And I, I leave these three questions in blue here because to me, that's how I get my students. When, when I say, I'd, I'd like you to summarize uh, for me, um, typically, I get the expression from the students, I, I don't know what you mean, what, what do you want me to do? So here's what I want you to do. Tell me what you did, what you found out, and how you know what you found out. And if you can do that, to me, that's a summarization of your work. And I do tend to put limitations on students in terms of how long they have to do that, whether it's I want it in a paragraph in written form, or I want it in one minute or less in a video or audio form, something like that. Um, typically I'm putting those limitations on them so that they can become a little bit succinct. But in addition, we're going to explore some other tools that are going to help you with, um, with the work of, um, of explaining and getting answers from students in very specific cases. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. So I'd ask you to think about some of the considerations um, that you need to worry about or at least think about with, with um, student summarizing. And one is uh, accessibility for all students. Um, so, uh, so when I talk about accessibility, I, I just want to remind you that, the, um, that the, the piece about this is it's not just students with special needs. Certainly they qualify and we think about them, um, but it's, it, it's also about, um, the accessibility of students who don't have access. You know, how are you going to allow them to do their summaries? You know, if they don't have access online or or can't get access online online right now, what are you going to do for them? Or if they're using just a phone or or how they're getting access? So thinking about that. So it's it's the device that they have and the bandwidth that they have in terms of um, being able to get online. So um, you can think about that. Uh, I'll just go back. I saw that somebody posted, what's the name of the, um, uh, a question to me, what's the name of the webinar I'm referring to? It's the face-to-face -to, -face to virtual for explaining. And if I go back real quick, it's linked at the top of this slide. So I did drop the slide deck in and I will drop it in again at the very end, but, um, but that's where you can go and get that particular webinar. So the other thing you wanna think about is who sees the student summary? You know, are you going to have the student summary be visible to all the students so you can see each other's summaries, or is that summary just coming to you? Um, and I think that's a, an important consideration when I go to choose the particular tool. Um, and so uh, some of the tools make it very easy for students to see everybody else's work, and that's what I want. I want them to be able to look and see what others are posting. Um, and, and part of that is, uh, I know when I was in the classroom and I would talk, uh, I was a physics teacher, uh, one of the things that the research showed was that students feel like they don't understand the subject and they're all alone. And what's, that's typically not actually true. In a physics class, as new concepts are being explained, it's more typical that the majority of students aren't understanding in that first shot. And that's why, of course, as teachers, we build out labs and other activities so that students can, can, can gain that that knowledge. Well, you know, I would do a lot of things with um, student response systems long ago where you had the little clickers because I wanted students to be able to give me their answer so I knew if they knew it, but I also wanted students to be able to see anonymously how many other students got it or not because there's a lot of power in knowing I'm the only one that doesn't get it or I'm in the majority, they, most of us don't get it. Okay, all right, well, I'm okay with that. So, so thinking about who sees the summary, I think can be really important as a part of what you, you do there. You also need to pay particular attention to um, uh, the age of your students. So when you're using some of these tools, they may explicitly say, not for use by, by students under 13, or it may not be a part of your COPA policy. Um, and so you can't just, Go ahead and say, I'm, you know what, this is a great tool, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. So you just want to think about um, those and give them a little bit of consideration. And then finally, you have to think about the tool that you're going to choose. And in some cases, the teachers make the choice. This is how I want you to summarize. 
In other cases, you can give choice to students. And I know Nicole talked um, uh, earlier today in her 9 a.m. webinar about, uh, and her webinar yesterday afternoon about um, choice boards and things like that. And so are you going to allow students to be able to choose their own tool to summarize? Um, I know that <clears throat> I was able to do that in the classroom where I would give students the choice and they would turn in things like Powtoons. They'd use Powtoons as a, a way to summarize their work. That's fine. So just thinking about that. But you also have to re realize that in this case, the tool will be in the student's hands. And so do you have the students with the ability to access that particular tool and make use of it? And so that's just a consideration for you to think about. So let's talk a little bit about the summarizing tools. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with this, this piece, less is more. And this is one of those sort of interesting caveats, I think, for all the tools that we're using. So I would go back, these are the choices I would make. I'm gonna use a few tools and I'm gonna use them in a lot of ways. And um, that way, when questions come up, students become more familiar with that particular tool. So as an example, we talked about in the explaining webinar about using Flipgrid, about using Padlet, and about using screencasts. So I'll do very quickly, I'll just show you like on Flipgrid where we talk about um, the, the tool and so you go to this, this particular tool, um, I can set this tool up to be able to give students the opportunity to summarize for me. And on the, on the student side, they get a green, big green plus and they can see that they click it and then they're able to screencast or just record their video um, for me. It's a, that's a great tool for me to use. Um, Padlet is another one. This is what a Padlet might look like. The student can just click the plus sign and then they can populate information. We talked about those tools there in the explaining webinar. So there's more information there if you wanna go back and take a look at them. We also talked about using things like digital whiteboards. So explain everything, EduCreations, Google Jamboard. Those are three of those tools that you might be able to make use of to have students explain to you. Now, and, and I want to remind you that as a teacher, I would use those to explain. I might get my, uh, as I showed in those webinars, get my, uh, my iPad and my pen and start doodling on the, on the iPad so that I could share that out. But students can use those same tools. You're modeling for them. Um, maybe they're going to be able to, to participate and maybe they won't. So those are tools that we already, um, that we've already talked about. But let's introduce, at least for me, uh, a couple of new tools. And um, the first one is that there's going to be a lot of video that probably is going to, to go on. Some of it's going to be synchronous, like this particular webinar is going to be synchronous. Uh, and so there's video. But there is power in recording videos and then posting them for students. And sometimes we talk about things called app smashing. App smashing is when you take one app and another app and you put them together. So let's pretend this was a lecture. If I use this as a lecture activity for students <clears throat> and I'm recording it, I could post this into YouTube, which is exactly what we're doing for these webinars. So if you haven't seen our, our archives on the, on the um, Learn On YouTube channel, you can go back and you can see them. All right, but at the end of the lecture, so students go through and they watch the lecture, and I don't necessarily have any feedback on what they got out of it. So if I wanted to approach that, what I would do is I would think about using one of these two tools, uh, Edpuzzle and PlayPosit. So PlayPosit, I put down here because that's not one that, that I made the choice. Uh, we've, focused, we've chosen to focus on Edpuzzle. I think it's more because of the familiarity we have with it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with either one of them. So you can please go and, and take a look at both. So let me jump over to, um, to Edpuzzle for a moment and um, <clears throat> just think about a little bit of how that, how that might work. So for Edpuzzle, um, when I think about Edpuzzle, you can see my screen and I have uh, this different content here. And what Edpuzzle does is it takes videos and it puts forced stop points in that allow students to then answer questions. So I'm going to, um, if I open up <clears throat> an example of one of these, this is, <laughs> this is actually a video that we made to show how to use closed captioning in Zoom. 
um, and it's a tutorial video. And then what I did was right here and right here are pause points. And so when the student goes through, they're going to be stopped and they're going to be asked open-ended questions. So you can see at the 14 second mark and at the 35 second mark, they're going to be asked questions and they can't move on past the video until they answer those questions. Then for me as a teacher, I'm able to collect that information from them. So it's one thing, you know, uh, I do like the idea of live sessions with teachers where I'm explaining so that the student can raise their hand and ask a question. But at the end of that, I do often wonder, like, what did you get out of it? And um, this is one of the things, again, when I was in the classroom, I would ask um, my students. I had, I had a, a mentor who once told me, you know, you do a lab. I, I'm betting your students don't get it. And, um, and I was like, no, of course they, they get it. Um, and he said, well, why don't you just ask the students, what was the point? Ask them, what was the point of that? And um, so I started to do that, and then I realized my students didn't understand what was going on. And in fact, I would put on the top of my um, inst student instructions, here is the point of this lab. Put in bold, and then I'd write out what I thought the point was. And then at the end, I would still ask students, what was the point? And what they were getting as the point wasn't matching what I was doing. And so I started to ask students to summarize, going back to that, what did you do? What did you find out? What do you, how do you know what you found out? As a way of trying to get students to help summarize the activity that we were in. Well, in a lecture, I can take this video content. So if I recorded my video in Zoom, and again, thinking about some of the best practices that we've talked about, it should be chunked down, it should be no more than six minutes. So if I had this, this particular video is just two minutes and 40 seconds. And really at the very end, I could just put one question in and says, summarize the video. And that would be a, a student summarizer. But I could also put these pause points in. So if I hit play here a moment, um, as it Hi, plays I'm through. Smith, Supervisor of Educational Technology from the Lincoln Intermediate Unit. And I'm Nicole Bond, the Educational Technology Specialist at Lincoln Intermediate Unit 12. And we want to show you how to use so there it, it stops and then you know i asked a, a little bit of a superficial question but who are the presenters the students are going to have to go back here and they're going to have to um answer that question before they can submit so they can type in something and then they have to submit and when they submit they're able to move on so for me this becomes um, a great way that i can um, make use of a tool like this for my own content I will point out, however, there are popular channels that are already here, including Khan Academy and YouTube and National Geographic that you can use. And then you can also go and look at Edpuzzle's online curriculum. So um, there are places where you can get content um, to work with your students. And even though we're not doing a full um, uh, exploration of, of Edpuzzle, and I'll show you where you can get more information, what I'll point out is that um, you can have assignments. So I assign these, um, I actually wound up assigning it twice, and you can keep track of your students as a, a class in here. So to me, Edpuzzle becomes, it, it's, it's another lift because you have to get your kids into that class. So they're gonna have an enrollment code. And if I go back here to the, um, to the slide deck, I'm gonna, uh, you'll see in a few moments, I'm gonna review uh, a couple of these tools and I'll show you uh, where you can get more information about um, Edpuzzle. But I also wanted to point out that if you go onto the Learn On site and you roll over where it says for educators, and then you go down to free online tools and you click the little down arrow, what you'll see is there is an Edpuzzle tutorial page and it has the information you might need to get through uh, to get started with Edpuzzle and some of the other tools that we're going to talk about. So, so Edpuzzle becomes a great way to allow students to summarize some of their work. Uh, and that's video work. If I'm thinking about text and I want students to read and summarize for me, Actively Learn is the tool that I use. And I'll point out that Actively Learn now allows video and it does some similar things for Edpuzzle. For me, I was already using Actively Learn for text. And so, um, so when I go to Actively Learn, um, each of these tools, you can sign in with your Google account, which makes it really handy to be able to, as a teacher, work with uh, those types of things. So 
here I am at, um, uh, and I have a class, okay? So I, I've clicked over to my, my class, I've already created it. You can take assignments. So this is an assignment that was already pre-populated in Actively Learn. So there's a read, it's a reading material. Quarantines have tried to keep disease out for thousands of years. And so uh, it's very timely. So you can see that they have pulled in new content. It has a set of directions for the students and what it's gonna look like there. And then it has um, some extra help for them. And then it has poll questions. So at the beginning, the students would answer the poll question. And so you can see where the, from the teacher point of view, that I would be getting these results in. And then the other thing that they've done is they've taken um, some of the key words that students might not understand and they have defined them for them. So you can put notes in um, for, for students uh, as they go through and then you can stop and ask them questions. So again, when I think about summarizing, I wanna chunk out the work and I wanna um, make sure that, that students can um, actively make sure that they are understanding what's going on and these perform these um, uh, 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 pieces that allow for that that summarization um, I'm gonna drop back out of here for a second so I'm in my class where I have I pulled in some a couple of activities but now uh, I want to think about the content so for the content, I rolled up and in Actively Learn, I had already enrolled as a science teacher. So because of that, a lot of what I'm going to get under curriculum units are gonna be science things. And under topics are also gonna be science things. So they have all this content that's already laid in there for you. Um, and when you go in and create your profile, it's gonna ask you if, um, if you're able to um, identify yourself. So if I go to my profile, you're going to see I have my email in there, but you'll also see that I'm teaching 9th to 12th grade science, and I can change that if I want. Um, and, and by doing that, that's what allows me to, um, uh, to change the content that I'm seeing here. So just keep that in mind. In addition, I can go over here and I can go to my imports. And under my imports, I can import a PDF, I can import um, uh, uh, documents, right? So like if I click add content, you can see I can import from the internet, a Google Doc, PDF, right? And I, I can do these types of things. I can import videos. And so if I click on one of these, here's an article. This is a PDF. And now for PDFs, it's going to put the questions at the end of the page, right? But what I can do is I can highlight text as I look at it and insert either a link or a note. So, um, you know, So when I go to, to send this out, that little highlighted text um, will be available for students. So when they read this, they're going to see that note, they're going to be able to click. And then at the end of the, the page, I can answer, ask questions, again, in short answer, multiple choice, or a poll question. So when I think about students summarizing, again, I want to get that information in a timely way and pull all of that together. So this becomes another powerful tool for that. So Actively Learn helps me with, with text. If you're looking for probably a little simpler solution, I, I, and I probably work from like maybe hardest to easiest, the DIY solution that I would recommend for you is Google Forms. And I'm gonna jump over to, to a Google Form where I, I created a Google Form here. So in your Google Suite, you know, when you go to New, and then you usually see Docs, Sheets, Slides, well, forms, if you go to more, there's going to be forms there. So, so I'll, I'll actually open up my drive for a moment and, and just point out, like, I can go over here, you see dot, I hit the plus sign, and I go to more, and there's Google Forms, okay? So, so I have my Google Form that's been created. Now, when you first start out, you can just create questions. So if you roll over these buttons, you're going to see, like, that's, that's how you add a new question. You just click on that. Um, this one's really important become important for me like import questions so if I've created a, a if I've created a question in a form maybe I, I've listed it, choose your name and I have every kid there I don't want to keep typing that every time I can import questions and so if I go to import questions it's going to allow me to pull in from my my, my previous form so uh, I'm gonna choose one of these that I, that I already selected and so if I choose that and I hit select, then I can pull it, it gives me a list of all the questions that are in there. And so, you know, we have those district dropdowns 
they, for those of you that are filling out that Act 48, and there are, we have 31 options in there, I don't have to type 31 options each time. I can just click on that and then import that. It'll populate that as soon as I check the box. So I can check the box and hit import questions, but I don't wanna do that here. Um, you can also just add information, titles and descriptions. You can add images and you can add videos. So think about the, the piece that I was, I was just working with, um, with um, Ed Puzzle where, uh, where I had video and then I had questions. Well, this is a really easy way to do that. If I have my video uploaded to YouTube, so if I hit add video, right, I can, if I have it posted somewhere or I have it on YouTube, I can, um, I can search for it and then pull that video in. And you can see I did that here. So, so the students can actually watch the video right in the form and then What's the video about, right? Please summarize right here what that video is about. Now, you don't have the stop points and you can't put other information in, but it does give you that, that option to allow you to be able to put um, things in there. In addition, you can do some, some interesting things where you can, you know, like I could ask a question like, what is four plus five? And I could um, put questions like this where I give them multiple choices and I can give them as many choices as I want. Um, and, and that can be helpful because that can allow you, as I'll show you in a moment, to be able to send that information right out to the student. The other thing I want you to check out is, if I left that as an open answer, you know, I don't want the student to type the word nine, N-I-N-E, right? I want them to, to um, put in a number. Well, I can actually tell them, you know, that it, I can force it to be a number. So I can go under here and go to response validation. And Google's pretty smart about it. Like they think it that you want a number based on the question, but you could tell them you want text or you want length. Like, you know, if I want length, the maximum character count. So again, if I want brevity for my students, I, I can, I can um, shorten that down. But under number, I can tell them it's gotta be, a, it has to be a number. Um, and I can set up these parameters. So like, it's gotta be a whole number here um, or is just an, a, a number. And then you can tell them, oh, you didn't type in that type of number. So, you know, like I could say it's gotta be between one and 10 if kids are messing around. Um, so all of these types of features help me with the summarization. But I also wanna point out a few things that are under the settings tool. So if you notice, I've gone up here to the gear and I'm gonna click on the gear. And if you haven't looked in here a lot, you want to, you do want to do that. So here's one of the things that I do with these responses is I collect their email address and give them a response receipt. And so you'll notice that, that I also have a check if the respondent requests it. I typically do this, change it to all these. Now here's what that means. When the students hit submit on the form, it's going to send them an email with all of the questions and their answers. That can be really helpful when you think about like the summarization piece. First of all, it gives them a record. Yes, I know I did it. Okay, so that's one thing. The second thing is that it allows them to go through and see their answers um, and review that information so that they can, they can come back to it. Um, you have a couple other options there. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'll click on presentation because you can shuffle the question order. So again, if you're just thinking about like making a quiz or something like that, you can, you can do that. Uh, as well. And you can also send them a little message like, thanks for submitting this. Grades will be posted at such and such a time because that's going to help you communicate that information. And then finally, there's a quizzes button. And if you haven't played with this, this is another way to get a summarization of the student information. So if I hit make a quiz, right, it'll, first of all, it'll allow me to assign point values to the questions and allow for auto grading. So when you do auto grading, I'm gonna just jump, jump down here, you can grade it right away, or you can tell them, no, 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 I don't want it out there, because you know, if one kid gets the answers, then other kids are submitting and things like that. Um, and you can, you can also tell them, you could just give them the, the grade, but you can say they don't get the correct answers, okay? Um, and so you have choices in here how you can, you can do this, and you can also, on a Chromebook, if your students are using Chromebooks, use locked on mode, which means that they can't open another tab while they're taking this particular quiz. So that's, that's a way that you can um, work through things um, in regards to, uh, to this. And then what you'll notice is that down here, I now have the answer key and the number of points that are available for that particular answer. And for each question, I can 
I can assign that. And if I had summarization pieces, then I would want to make sure that that I have, um, uh, as I click here, you know, I can put the answer key in for myself so that students can see what the answer would be, right, and provide um, feedback. But um, but what I want to do is is um, is actually grade that myself. So that's why I would hold on to when you think about that setting. So those are three tools there. Um, and I, I'm gonna get to the questions. We have a couple questions that have been submitted. So I'm gonna get to the questions now, but I wanna do a quick review of the content that we talked about. So I talked about Ed pu Puzzle. Um, you'll, a couple of things. So I, I just put in screenshots that you can see. If you wanted to join my class and try one of those assignments as a student, that's my class code. You're welcome to, to join in and try it. It's a sandbox account. And so, uh, so you can't really hurt it, but you can see what it looks like from the student perspective. I also wanna remind you that you can, um, you can do a couple things. You can turn on closed captioning for students that might need it, and you can prevent skipping. And that's the key that I like. I don't want students to be able to skip through the video. Maybe they're not sitting there watching. Maybe, you know, I'm sure none of you have ever done this where you hit play and you walk away, but at least they won't, they'll have to come back and they'll have to answer that question before they go on. For actively learn, I also created a class account here. Um, and you can um, um, put that in and you can join into that class if you want to see it. As a reminder, you can add notes and you can add questions uh, wherever you might want for a lot of uh, reading, although they're also doing video as well now. And then for Google Forms, just a reminder um, about a couple of things there that uh, you want, you can make this a quiz, that you may want to collect their email, and then look through the toolbar that you see on the side. I also put in a link here to uh, some templates that you can steal. Um, uh, that is not our work, but it, you'll see that it is a place where you can go to get some starters for steal these forms by clicking on these. So if you're looking for exit tickets, or 321s or DOK type summarizers, uh, they're all available there for you. I also want you to think about as you do the, uh, the Google Forms, you think about um, adding in rich uh, information like images that you want to collect the information from them. So your worksheets, if you're trying to take worksheets to become summarizers, um, can, you use, um, uh, can you use that type of information there? So as I, as I think about the reflection and you guys um, post uh, any questions that you might have, uh, what I'll point out, uh, one of the questions we got is, uh, does Edpuzzle work with O365 accounts? And the answer is yes. And, um, but one of the things that I will tell you is that um, Edpuzzle is almost like its own LMS. It, it, now it will integrate with a number of things. So, um, so one of the other questions is, does it integrate with Schoology? It does integrate with Schoology. So you can take things from Edpuzzle directly to Schoology. Um, one of the things, I, I, I wanna give a little caveat, there probably is a little bit of back end work for your school to enable LTI integration for that. Um, and, uh, Schoology and Canvas have both been struggling as everybody moves to online. Uh, so some of those links got broken. So um, what you can at a minimum do is you can take a link and you can populate it in. And also with Edpuzzle, and I'm not sure if I can do this very quickly, but I'll try and show it. Um, uh, let me go over to my classes. Uh, what I want to show, give me one moment here, is um, that you can embed. So if I go to my content and, um, I, and I choose one of these, these pieces, uh, that I can, when I go to assign it, um, I can also embed this. So I can give a public link to this. Um, so while I can assign it within my class, I can also take that same information and make it a public link, which would mean anybody could access it, but, um, but they'll have to be logged in but I can also embed it. So in Schoology and in other uh, places, you can use the embed code. Um, I'm gonna go back here a moment. I saw another question that came in is, do you recommend adding Doctopus with G forms? Um, so yes, Doctopus is, is a great way to uh, work through um, getting information out to students. I used Doctopus before I was able to get into a Google Classroom to be able to really distribute information, uh, work through a lot of grading types of things, but it's not for the faint of heart. You would definitely want to um, look through a webinar. Uh, so that's not a beginner activity, but it, but it, is, um, but it is an activity that, um, that you can uh, make use of for, for using that. So I do recommend it, but you just wanna make sure that, that 
you get the proper um, feedback that you need for that. So as a reminder, um, I'm going to go back out to our Learn On site. Um, uh, we have a whole series of webinars going today and then through next week as well. Um, the next one coming up is going to be assessing math online. Uh, and then you can see that we also start to move a little bit into online content. And so I just point out that um, we're going to be focusing on some online content solutions for ELA and then next week uh, science and then social studies as we continue this um, you're going to see some math pieces coming in there as we start to narrow in a little bit away from tools and more towards content. Um, I'm going to go back here again as well and just point out that um, you can get access to, uh, to our um, evaluations. I'm going to drop that into the um, into the chat for you. Uh, that's where you can go to get the um, information or the evaluation. We'd love to hear your feedback. We are looking at that feedback and trying to decide where do we go from here as we produce more content uh, for folks. And then finally, the, the uh, Act 48 um, piece. And when you get kicked out of here, it's going to give you this splash screen. You want to hit continue to go on your way to record your Act 48 hours. So with that, I want to thank everybody for coming out to our webinar this morning and, um, and participating here. Uh, if you have additional questions, um, I I'm happy to answer them offline for you. And I just go back and remind you, thinking about less is more. So, so we're really trying to focus in on a few tools here as, as opposed to saying, here's a list of a thousand tools, go explore. Using these tools and using them in a, in a, a bunch of different ways. So um, thank you. I know we <laughs> a couple of you, I'm starting to recognize your names. I won't call you out uh, for participating in all of these webinars, uh, but I do wanna thank you guys for uh, continuing to come out. And if you have anything or need anything, let us know. Thank you very much. Have a good day. <laughs>